what we discussed in March of 2014. So exactly two years ago, uh, the, I noted that the, that the old PDF I had downloaded was on the 11th of March. And this was the iOS, the iOS security white paper, which was dated February of 2014 from Apple. So Apple published that first really comprehensive white paper two years ago, and we gave it multiple podcasts. One of the things that it makes very clear is that they deliberately did a high repetition count PBKDF, password-based key derivation function, which cannot be sped up. Nothing can speed that up. And that's 80 milliseconds per guess and is not subject to being changed by the firm. But there, it isn't in firmware. It's in hardware. So, so what I wanted to amplify for our listeners is that that's slow. I mean, 80 milliseconds. <laughs> well, you know, if you have a 16-character random password... That's exactly. millions of years is what it is. Exactly. And so I wanted to quote what we had covered. It's funny because when I when I opened that PDF and scrolled to that location, I had highlighted this block um, from which we, we looked at closely. And I and I and you'll remember this word, Leo, because they use this again. They made up a word that I that I that I gave them some some heat over. Two, two years ago. So they wrote under passcodes. They, they said, by setting up a device passcode, the user automatically enables data protection, which we know is the, the, whole, dice, the whole device encryption using a, uh, a, randomly uh, a randomly chosen symmetric encryption key so that all of the storage is always encrypted. A a Apple goes on, iOS supports four-digit, and arbitrary-length alphanumeric passcodes. This was then. We know that they've, they, they increased it by, to, by two digits to six since then. In addition to unlocking the device, a passcode provides the entropy for encryption keys, which are not stored on the device. This means an attacker in possession of a device cannot get access to data in certain protection classes without the passcode. The passcode is tangled. And then that was the word. I said, what? What the heck does tangled mean? They, you know, they just pulled that one out of the air. Tangled. The passcode is tangled with the, and we think they mean hashed in some way, because they say tangled with the device's UID. So, Brute force attempts must be performed on the device under attack. A large iteration count is used to make each attempt slower. And, and, and e so, so even if this were done in software, you can't ever short circuit a large iteration count. You, there's no way to short circuit it. Um, and it is designed to be acceleration proof. Um, so, so, so con continuing, they said the iteration count is calibrated so that one attempt takes approximately 80 milliseconds. This means it would take more than five and a half years to try all combinations of a six character alphanumeric passcode with lowercase letters and numbers. And they go on, but I won't because, it, you know, this makes the point. So what the FBI is asking for is for, um, oh, actually it did, they did say here, uh, skipping a paragraph, to further discourage brute force password attacks, the iOS interface enforces escalating time delays after the entry of an invalid passcode at the lock screen. Um, that's what, that, that's one of the three things the FBI has asked Apple to remove is the, is the removable 
soft, the escalating software imposed, whoops, you made, you, you didn't guess right. So we're going to make you wait longer and longer each time. Um, but that 80 milliseconds cannot be um, short circuited. Now, and, and, and again, we, we lack definitive design specs. So it's not clear what's being done in hardware, what's, what part the secure enclave has. But we, we really are seeing a, a proactive design attempt from Apple to limit their own ability to crack phones. Yeah, but that, nobody's going to... I tried this, by the way. I had a nice, long, strong password on my iPhone. And uh, it's such a pain in the ass. Nobody's going to do that. I mean, you, you can. Correct. <laughs> correct. But it's not and convenient. So, so I wanted to make sure that our listeners know... It's well, there. Okay, so it's there. You, you can know, do it. Yeah, and, 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 and also and by the way, you should turn off automatic updates, right? Because you don't want them pushing some firmware on your system, right? And um, I would turn off the fingerprint reader because I don't... I. Uh, there's issues with that. You know, you can, can be compelled, for instance, to use it. So you can't use the fingerprint reader. You have to use a long, strong password, which is a pain in the butt to type, and you have to do it every time you unlock your phone. And you I, cannot accept firmware updates of any kind because you don't know uh, if they're okay. Uh, okay, so what we just <laughs> what we just covered though prevents it indicates firmware cannot short circuit that eighty milliseconds. So if you do have a long strong password, but no, no, but then, they don't have to. If you've modified the firmware, yes, the FBI is asking for this dopey modification, this front door brute force thing. But why bother? Just modify the firmware so that you, while the person's using the phone, you transmit the unencrypted data out of the phone. Do a background backup. Because we know by the way, oh, incidentally, you have to turn off all iCloud backups because we also know Apple has access to those. Right. At this point, you've got a secure phone no one wants to use. A bad guy will do that because he's motivated. Right. The rest of us will not. Right. Well, and, and we do know, uh, as we discussed last week, that five, five weeks or, or I guess it was six weeks before the last use that phone had been backed up to iCloud, and the FBI had that. But what they wanted right. was, you know, for whatever reason, whether they actually no, want the it's phone, it's a precedent, is what they want, or yes, or they believe they would be able to and, uh, to achieve. And what they remember, wanted. the precedent right now is make it easy for them to do the six digits or four digits, probably. The precedent, though, would establish a precedent to get at the real precedent is Apple will write firmware to help us get into a phone, right. And should right. that happen, can you? Are you saying to me that I can prevent Apple from getting my data? No, because it, right, if I've unlocked the phone with my long, strong, good, entangled password, the phone is now unencrypted, right? Correct. Correct. Then, then while it's unlocked in the background, the, they go, the symmetric <laughs> encryption key is in place, and, they can and the phone has access out of to my your phone. data. Yeah. Yep. So that's the real precedent, I think. I don't yep. think that it's about, this, about the brute forcing. Right. So m my point was <laughs> that, um, that, that the, 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 a long pass key or pass code, pass phrase, whatever you want to call it, um, does thwart the brute forcing. But, but you, you make the point that if Apple has been compelled to, to access a phone... While it's in use, it's unlocked. I mean, it is decrypted. Yeah, and you know, and, and your 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 comment about uh, uh, the uh, keyboard interception is the same. You know, I, right. I remember um, uh, we all noted when they uh, when Apple allowed custom keyboards to be added to iOS. Right. That they that they, they replace you, <laughs> yeah. Well, the, but they, they don't they, have to warn you. <laughs> they warn you, and do they take Apple's the keyboard. they 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 take the me the, the measure right. of of using their keyboard right. if they detect that it's a password right. that, that you're entering. So you have just, to trust Apple. And once there's a precedent that the federal law enforcement can compel Apple to do what they want, which they frankly can, 
uh, it's Apple can't really say, oh, we can't do that, because they can. They always can, right? Right. So my all, all I'm saying is it's a it's your it's just like locking a door. It's a you, you can make a law that says you can't cross that lock, but anybody can break in. Locks do yeah. nothing. The law that what the lock does is establish a, a line in the sand that you cross it now you're breaking the law and we can use the law to prosecute you. But the law itself can be subverted by a bad actor whether in government or out. So I'm just saying, it's really, all of this is a lot of hand-waving, but ultimately, the idea that your phone could be secure is a long, is a long shot. Yeah. Okay, I'm just wanting you to say yes. <laughs> no, I completely agree. Because I, I, I think that that's a, I mean, what we're talking about is a good thing. We should have laws against it, and, and we shouldn't allow government to do this. It's the Fourth Amendment, et cetera. It should be very clear. Congress needs to make a very clear statement that this is going too far doesn't mean it won't happen. And it may not be government that does it. I mean, it could be a bad actor at Apple. <laughs>